last okay. time, you remember two weeks ago, we were talking about the prophetic collapse of time, you know, from the, the present, uh, from the, uh, uh, from the, the present and the past, you know, that there's a collapse of time. So when the priest actually is elevating the host and reliving the words of Jesus, he's collapsing, uh, you know, the time uh, <coughs> between him and the past event, at which point, of course, uh, that past event, um, you know, comes into the present, quite literally, Jesus' body at the Last Supper. We also talked about what's called the prophetic future and the collapse of time. So when Jesus is at the Last Supper, right, and he uh, talks about this is my body, which will be given for you, he's literally collapsing the time between the Last Supper and him on the cross bringing his body into the species of the bread at the table at that very moment. So we were just ch trying to do an introduction about what was the Semitic mentality? How did Jesus see this? And of course, mm -hmm. he has a view of sacred time. He doesn't have a, a, a view of secular time as we have today. And, and of course, he intends it in that sense. He believes his father will collapse time as God does collapse that time to make the Eucharist present today and to make the, um, his body in the future present in, in the species at, at, at the table. Uh, these are kind of like foreign ideas to us, but we really have to learn them if we're going to learn what Jesus intended and to really see his real presence in the Eucharist. You know, we kind of talked about some of these Eucharistic miracles, and right. we right. can get into that uh, again today. But, but I mean, again, some of them, you know, especially the one having to do with Pope Francis, is so utterly remarkable. I mean, you'll never think of the Eucharist in the same way again after looking at that miracle. I mean, let's face it that, the, the you know, you, you really, there, there's really a good provenance uh, of this host mm -hmm. from the time it is discovered by a, a priest in the back of the church. He puts it into the a glass to dissolve it and puts it in the tabernacle. He comes back a couple of days later. It's literally metamorphosized into this piece of flesh, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, Pope Francis has, uh, at that time, Bishop Archbishop Bergoglio mm -hmm. had, you know, photographs taken of it and, and wanted a record of what, what, what had happened. And of course, we see that it actually sort of grew a little bit uh, in that glass. Then he had uh, his, uh, two of his physicians uh, you know, slice uh, a piece of that, uh, send it without any kind of uh, you know, announcement as to where it came from and, and its provenance and so forth. Right. Just sent that sample to New York University. And of course, they, they had uh, about a team of five physicians uh, uh, looking at it. But the, the, the top one who was the top forensic uh, you know, um, uh, a physician in New York uh, literally said, well, I can tell you this came from the left ventricle, lower l part of the left ventricle, um, you know, and, uh, um, but I, I can also tell you that this piece of flesh was removed while the heart was still alive and beating wow. and in a state of, of real uh, anxiety mm -hmm. because it, it is beating very fast. And, and the reason he knew that was because there were white blood cells embedded in the heart tissue. And of course, uh, once a, a, the body dies, mm -hmm. right, um, the white blood cells <clears throat> immediately diminish. The only way you could get that piece of heart tissue with the white blood cells still embedded in it and still per permeating the, the, the walls of the membrane is to literally remove it from the person. Their heart is still beating. They're still alive in a state of anxiety and to literally kill them and take it, or actually take it and kill them. You know, to, you know, kill them by taking it. Now, we know that the church did not do this. Right. I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is a completely enigmatic miracle. It's got a terrific provenance of several different doctors from the moment it was removed in the tabernacle all the way to the time it's uh, up there in the Rockefeller uh, you know, University in New York, up to the forensic test, up to the reporting of the forensic test, and 
even the photographic evidence prior to the sending of the host. And of course, with Pope Francis overseeing it all, it's really quite a remarkable thing. Now, I mean, you know, I, I look at this, and, and I have, you know, this that little uh, handbook of, you know, it's, it's just a little 25, 30 page handbook of, of contemporary miracles, mm -hmm. and I have it described there. So right. if, if people have, uh, you know, email access, I can send it to them. Uh, I just, I, I don't want to burden my staff with sending a lot of hard copies, though. Right, exactly. If people have uh, access to an email, 